In this video, we're going to be talking about the Desert Ceratopsian Protoceratops. Protoceratops' full name is Protoceratops andrewsi, which means first horned face, andrews. So, first horned face, uh, the dinosaur was first believed to be the original Ceratopsian. Uh, this was not the case, but at the time, paleontologists believed that. And andrewsi is named after Roy Chapman Andrews, who was an American zoologist and paleontologist who led the first expedition which discovered Protoceratops in the Gobi Desert. Protoceratops lived 75 to 70 million years ago in what is now Mongolia's Gobi Desert and parts of northwestern China. It was about 4 feet tall and 8 feet long, on average weighed about 200 pounds, and males were a bit larger than females. There are two subspecies, but there is a very slight variance in them. The dinosaur would have been a tan or sand-colored body, most likely, with maybe a little bit of green. On the end of its nose, it had a hardened short horn, which was more of a bump. This was larger in males. The head crest would be the main feature, and it had strong cheekbones to support the frill. Now, a common misconception, and this is the case for most Ceratopsians, including Triceratops, Styracosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, their frills weren't really that strong. So, originally it was thought the frills would be used to defend against, say, a T-Rex attacking it. But that really wasn't what the frill was for. It was mainly for display and to make the animal look bigger. Kind of like what elephants use when they flap out their ears fully. It makes them look larger. The frill would have offered some protection for the back of the neck, but other than that, it would have mainly been for display. As you can see in this picture, the frill, in the center of the frill, there are these two big patches, and this would have been covered with skin and blood vessels, with which the animal could have pumped blood into its frill, and then that would have made it like a brighter color, whether for intimidation or to communicate with other protoceratops. There is a huge amount of variation in the frills between specimens, and once again, it looks like males would have had larger ones, although this isn't confirmed. Protoceratops had a parrot-like beak, which would have had a strong bite force for self-defense and for eating tough roots. Its mouth had between 48 and 56 molar teeth. Its eyes were especially adapted for dawn and dusk activity, which would have been a cooler part in the day to be away from the sun, but not too late at night so that they could avoid predators easier. It had a pretty stout body and broad frontal feet, which would have been good for digging through sand. It had a strong, broad tail, which not only would have balanced out the weight of the head, but also could have been used to store fat cells, similar to what crocodiles and Gila monsters do. Protoceratops lived in what is now modern-day Mongolia, southern Russia, and northwestern China. It should be noted that the Modern-day Gobi Desert is different from the late Cretaceous version. In the modern-day Gobi Desert, it's very similar to the Sahara, where there are essentially no plants, very dry, although the Gobi does get much colder at night. The Gobi Desert of the late Cretaceous period would have been much similar to the modern-day Sonora Desert. There's a lot more plants, it's still dry, but it would rain more often than in the Sahara. Protoceratops was a desert creature, Water would be the main concern. Fortunately for it, it is a reptile, and they are better suited for living in deserts than mammals or birds. It lived with several other dinosaur species, the two most famous of which being Velociraptor and Ovaraptor. There were also several species of large land tortoises, which would be similar in size to the Galapagos tortoise, although this particular Cretaceous tortoise it went extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs did. Protoceratops would have been active during dawn and dusk, as that would be the best time to avoid the night predators and to avoid the heat of the day. It would have probably spent its days either in caves or in the shadows of large sand dunes, so as not to die from heat stroke, which is a particular threat to reptiles. Interestingly enough, Protoceratops laid its soft-shell eggs. We know this due to the number of nests that have been discovered. Now, soft-shell eggs are rare in dinosaurs, and also adults have been discovered nearby these nests, so there's a good amount of proof showing that 
they would have been caring parents as opposed to just leaving their babies out to fend for themselves. Velociraptor appears to have been the main predator for Protoceratops, while the eggs would have been at risk from Avaraptor. Now, an interesting theory, which there's a little bit of evidence for it, but with more individuals being discovered, we would know better. This theory says that the subadults would have had essentially no frill. This would have allowed them to run on two legs, which would have made them faster and would have been easier for them to evade predators. Then later on in life, once it becomes an adult, then it would grow the frill and then go onto all fours. As with most of the characteristics with Protoceratops, the males tended to have bigger frills, which would have helped for display and for competing for dominance in their herd. Protoceratops was first discovered in 1922 at Flaming Cliffs, which is now a famous fossil site. This expedition was led by the American zoologist and paleontologist Roy Chapman Andrews. In this same expedition, the first Velociraptor and Ovaraptor skeletons were discovered. Now, as the name suggests, Protoceratops was first believed to have been the first Ceratopsian. We now know that Protoceratops is its own separate subgroup of the Ceratopsian family. Another theory that went around was that Protoceratops was a ancestor to the Ankylosaurs, which I am very curious as to what the paleontologists were thinking. Because I guess if you look at the mouth, it's a little bit similar, but they knew it had a frill at the time, and no Ankylosaurs have any kind of frill. So it doesn't really make sense why someone would think that. Protoceratops is one of the best understood dinosaurs. Quite a few individuals have been discovered, at least eight of them with Velociraptor teeth marks on their bones, although we are unsure if this was just scavenging or if the dinosaur had been killed by them. Multiple group nests have been discovered with several dozen eggs. Now, my personal favorite fossil, and probably one of the most famous fossils of all time, is the fighting dinosaurs. So one of them is a Protoceratops, the other is a Velociraptor, and these two died fighting each other. In this very striking pose, you can see the Velociraptor's, one of its arms is in the Protoceratops' beak, and its arm is being broken, and that toe sickle claw is in the Protoceratops' stomach, slicing it open. We're not 100% certain on how these guys died, but it probably would have been either a collapsing sand dune, or they were caught in a sandstorm. And it's also guessed it would have been at night, which is when the two were active, and this would have further disorientated them. Protoceratops can be found in most museums around the world due to the number of individuals. There is also an interesting historical theory, which is that the different uh, nomad steppe tribes, such as the Scythians, the foundation of griffins may come from dinosaurs like Protoceratops. The way the Scythians described griffins, they were wolf-sized creatures that laid eggs on the ground and had a large beak. So there's some evidence to show that they may have found a Protoceratops skeleton and interpreted that as griffins. If you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as that would really help me out. If you have any suggestions, questions, or comments, please leave that below the video, and I will answer those as best I can.